Hi, this is Tamara at MooglyBlog.com and in this video I'd like to demonstrate the whip stitch or whip stitch seaming. Now this is another one like the mattress stitch that is done with a yarn needle or tapestry needle. Uh, here I have two little squares of crochet. Uh, this works exactly the same on knitting as it does for crochet. I'm just demonstrating with crochet. So what you want to do is line up your pieces the way you want them to be. I could be sewing into the edges, I could sew into the bottoms, um, I could sew an edge to a bottom, however I wanted to put them together. For the ease of demonstration I'm just going to put the two top edges here together. Now I've made sure to make my two swatches the same length as they have the same number of stitches. Uh, if you're doing this where you don't have an even number of stitches or where you're working to the edge, you'll need to just kind of eyeball and figure out where the stitches look best so that you get it sewn together the way you like. So I'm going to do this with a contrasting yarn so you can better see the stitches themselves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold them together sandwiched like this. Not next to each other, but sandwiched so that either the wrong sides are together or the right sides are together. It just depends on the pattern and what it calls for. What I'm going to do is insert my needle under the first stitch, both loops, and then under the first stitch of the second piece under both loops. And I'm going to pull through a ways. Normally this would be a cut end, I've just left it attached so I can reuse the yarn later. Then I'm going to, that's the first one right there, then I'm going to insert the hook, come back around and go the same direction under the first stitch or excuse me, under the second stitch of the first piece and under the second stitch of the second piece. And pull on through. Make sure that loop gets up on top here. And that's really all there is to it. I'm going to keep working evenly, going away from me. Go under the third loop, the third stitch, third stitch of each piece. I could do this towards me too, I just like to sew away, a little safer that way I suppose. And then just snug up the stitches however you like under the fourth stitch of both pieces. Oops, slid right out. There we go. And pull through. And we keep going right along for however long it is that we need to sew these pieces together. If these were very long pieces and they weren't clearly one for one, what I would want to do is use some sort of like binder clip or they make special sewing clips um, or maybe stitch markers. I like to use stitch markers. And I would pin the pieces together to make sure the, steaming, the seam was worked evenly all the way across and so I didn't end up with you know, one end or one side a lot shorter than the other. Just helps keep everything a little nice and neater. So I'm just going to finish this off here so you can see how it looks. And as you can see this is not an invisible seam. You're definitely going to be able to see this, although it would be far less noticeable if I was working it in the blue. However, it can be very decorative if that's the look you're going for. This is the side I sewed it from. And this is the opposite side, so about the same. And that's all there is to whip stitch seaming. Thanks for watching.